So for day four of tutorial week, I was going to cover how to use a light to create kind of an artificial sun. Um, and so I loaded up one of the scenes I've already done here uh, before, because I thought it provided a pretty good example on uh, how to do that. Um, the, the whole scene was lit by just one single light. Uh, there's, there's actually no others, just one. Um, and it was able to give all the effects, uh, all the shadows, uh, with very minimal uh, resources used. So, um, before I show you how to do the actual making of the sun, I'm going to kind of go over some of the uh, the uh, tools that you have available, like the values that you can change on a light itself. Um, so, with the sun selected, obviously intensity here is going to be how bright your sun is. So, let's put that lower. Uh, it's going to get uh, darker and the higher you put it, the brighter it'll go. Um, and there's a couple I'm just going to skip because they're not going to be as needed. Uh, the horizontal FOV and vertical FOV are how wide uh, the light is going to show. So if you decrease your horizontal FOV here and your vertical, you're going to notice that it's starting to get a very narrow light beam. And if, if you go up higher, you're going to start seeing it getting much wider. Um, back up here okay so next here um, the uh, the shadow filter size if you look at the shadows here by changing this value it'll be your detail of your shadows so if you have it all the way down you're gonna get some pretty uh, pretty grainy shadows very sharp edges but if you increase a little bit you can start uh, smoothing out the shadows to the point of almost being non-existent so the shadow at 10 that's going to be kind of um, the ambience of the shadow. So if you have it all the way down, you're going to get darker shadows. If you turn it up here, might not be the best scene for it, but uh, you can kind of see the shadows there getting darker when it's lower and lighter when it's higher. Uh, for a sunset like this, having a darker shadow is going to be more wanted. If you're saying it's like daytime, you might have more ambient light bouncing around, so you want to have that higher. Um, your min and uh, min distance and max distance are going to be the points in which the light are shown. So from here, you can see that point right here is the min. If I increase that, you'll see it move. And I think the max is too far back to actually see, but uh, if you de you can decrease that and uh, set the the how far it'll go to. Um, get back here. Okay. Um, the volumetric intensity, if you have volumetrics on the light, will increase how how strong that is. You can get some pretty crazy effects with it, but normally um, you, do, you don't want to turn that up too much. It just starts to look a little weird. Um, noise strength, this one is useful if used right. Um, that is how much uh, noise you want to give to the light, I guess. Um, if, for example, if I turn it all the way up here, if you, if I wipe time here, you'll notice the light shifts and moves. There's a lot of noise added, and it actually kind of animates the light a little bit. Um, that could be pretty useful. It actually comes default uh, with a little bit on there, but it, uh, if you want to, you don't want that at all. You can decrease it all the way down. And then, no matter what you do, it, the light will have that same intensity. I think having it up a little bit does have a nice effect, um, so it's not a bad idea to keep it up, uh, usually around where the default is. Um, besides that, you have uh, you have your colors. So, like in here, I kind of I have a little red, uh, less green, and almost no blue to give that like, kind of an orange yellow effect. And then you're just your positions. So there's other values here. Some of them you're not going to really ever have to worry about. But for making a sun, those are going to be the, the ones you're going to have to actually uh, work with. So to try to recreate this effect, I'm going to disable this light. So now we're just back to kind of this plain scene. Uh, luckily, this map ha already comes with uh, the sky map having a sun there. That's just part of the map. So I kind of had to work with where it was positioned. Um, I'll show you later how to actually make a, a physical sun in SFM if you need to. Um, so we're going to add a new light. And if you take the light and drag it onto the viewport here, you'll actually kind of take it over. So as long as you're in the motion editor and you have it selected, then you can actually move it around as if you are that light. 
So right now the light's not going to be doing much. It's, you have to be pretty close for the effect that you want. So we're going to start playing with these values. Mainly making sure that the light can stretch far enough. So we're going to want to have to remap some of these. The max distance, if we increase this, uh, it's not going to get up to the values that we want. As I showed in the last video here, if you right click and go to remap slider range, you can change these values. So I'm going to say, it's going to probably be overdoing it, but let's just say that we change the max to 300,000. Um, along with max, there's this far Z of 10, remap that to the same amounts. Uh, it the max won't work unless you have this up as well. So turn this far as the 10 up, your max distance up, and now it should be stretching the light much much farther. Uh, you can't see that though because the light's not bright enough. So let's turn the intensity up. So we're gonna have to remap that too. Let's say uh, we'll do 100,000. So we'll turn that up. There we go. Uh, this is going to be a little bit too bright, but we are going to be pushing this light really far away. So, uh, since we already have kind of a placement for a sun, we'll kind of fly out there and turn around and aim at the scene. Now, it's a little hard to see where they are, so if you decrease these field of views, you can start to zoom in on the points that you want. The further back you go, the more zoomed you're going to have to be. And it actually does make a difference uh, for visuals um, for having those as low as you can. So let's go back here. We're going to have to position the the sun to be a little bit closer to where we want it here. So move it down there, right about there, and then let's turn it to make sure it's looking right at us. Is that looking good? Okay. We'll just drop that field of view a bit more. Okay. So we're still not really getting the light that we want here, I think. Let's do... Let's see here. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of light, but not too much. So I'm going to remap this again. Uh, let's put it up to 400,000. Okay. So that's doing pretty good. So we're starting to get some of these shadows uh, showing here. But if you look at the details of these shadows, there's not that much to them. Uh, they're pretty faded. The uh, the best way to, to increase the shadows, like I mentioned before, is to change the filter size. So you'll start to see those defined shadows. But one of the other values you want to make sure of is these, these field of views. If you start making it a really, really wide light, thinking that, oh, well, I just want to cover the whole map. I'll just make these values really, really big. The problem is you start losing some of your detail here uh, for your shadows. No matter what, even if you if you start turning down these uh, that filter size, yeah, so you're getting a shadow, but it's kind of pixelated. It's not really looking that great. If I drop these field of views, you'll start to see the detail come back again to the shadows. So you that's why you want to have this sun be far out and then zoomed in more because you'll start you'll allow you to maintain some detailed shadows from a distance. Um, for the video too, I had uh, volumetrics. Volumetrics are that kind of gives that foggy look. Uh, from a distance, the, the god beams, you could say. Uh, if you right-click the light here, uh, down here, you'll have invo enable volumetrics. You can turn that on. It's Don't overuse it, but uh, for a sun, it does come in handy. So you'll, I turned it on, but you, again, you'll see you're not really seeing the volumetrics. Uh, just like the field of view affected the shadows, the min and max values affect the vol can affect the details of the volumetrics. So right now the max is probably going way too far out and the min is probably way too far that way. We want to try to find a way to get the light to be within the scene and not too far so that you can get those, that volumetrics to come back. So if we, uh, oh yeah, and uh, the min can uh, help affect some of the shadows details here too. So we're going to drop the min here see if we can get it to be within just the scene here. You can start to see the volumetrics are coming in a little bit over there. But we're going to remap this and we're going to put it to 330,000 here. And those values, I'm just using numbers, whatever, for whatever your scene is, you might have to just play around with it. So dropping them in here, yeah, you can see the line there. The line's coming through the scene. So we want to put it just before the tree line. Uh, since the camera's showing that way, I'll put it back a little bit. There we go. And the max, we're going to drop down so that it's a little further back. There. 
So now you can see that you're starting to get the, the volumetrics popping up because you started to drop down, uh, drop that min and max. So let's get closer here. Okay. So I think the shadows details are a little bit too sharp. So like I said, the shadow filter size, go until you get about the blur that you want, so that should work. And then the 10 here, well, I'm going to want those darker shadows, so I'll drop that. All right, but the sun's not supposed to be white when it's on the horizon like that. So let's sort of play with the colors a little bit. So we'll go down here, um, and so it'll probably be mostly red, a little bit of yellow. So we're going to drop green down and most of the blue down, and then you start seeing that yellow color coming in that we want. Yeah, that should work. All right. That's starting to look pretty good now. So let's back up here. All right, yeah, but I think that I could use a little bit more volumetrics here, just cause, well, because <laughs> I do I do like my volumetrics. So you can increase the values here, but the, like I said, don't try to overdo it. So um, there, that gives that kind of a foggy evening look. Let's see how that previews here. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now. You, like I said, you're going to have to really play around kind of with your own uh, placement. Like if you have a sun high in the sky, you probably want a whiter color, uh, maybe not as sh uh, or having sharper shadows. Um, it's just going to be placing placing a light out there, playing with the values and seeing what you can get. Uh, but say you the sun wasn't there, like you don't have a map like this. If I had the light, uh, let's place the sun, uh, say that it's way over here instead so we'll move it up here you want to have the sun up here the a map that isn't set up like um like this one to have a sun in the placement that you want it or not at all you're going to look up and that's just going to look like some weird like like ufo is shining down uh on you from there that's probably not the effect you're going to be wanting so um there is a kind of a cheat way i figured out how to make kind of a sun in the sky uh, that's actually just using uh, a new light. So if you want to create a new light here, uh, I'm going to rename this one to Sun so I know which one it is. Um, you're just going to want to make something that's incredibly bright. So I'm going to put at 100,000, max that out. Uh, okay. And you want to take your, your field of views, at least for now, we're going to max those out as well. Enable volumetrics on it so that it'll have a visual. Now you're going to have a giant white cone. That's actually what you're wanting here. So we're going to want to move that into position but how we want it. But obviously if you try to fly this around, you're going to have some uh, hard time. So I'm going to hide it so I can see here. So we're going to go up to this light here and shine down. They look down there. So now if you look up, uh, we'll just enable that again. We have, well, it looks like big sun, but uh, if we draw, uh, I wanted to have those field of views really high so we had a good base to start from. So if you start to drop those down, you'll start to see that circle uh, decrease here. So get to about the size of the sun that you want, and voila, now you have uh, an actual round sun. It, this is a little close so you can actually see it shift and move with the camera. But if you put it farther back you could act, have a, a pretty effective sun. To show the difference if you turn that off you're not, you just kind of have that weird shape for a light but not with it on. Now you actually have a perfectly round sun up there. So then you can do that anywhere you want. Straight above, side, anywhere. Um, I've, I've used that a couple times and it seems to come in handy. Um, so yeah, uh, if I would say just play around with the lights here. Um, see what's the best, uh, best for your scene, kind of what the mood you want to set up for. Uh, if one thing to remember too is if a light isn't being used to create shadows, disable the shadows just like you can enable volumetrics make sure you disable the shadows on it uh, you can't have anything more than eight single lights in a scene that are enabled or with shadows enabled that's just the limitation with SFM and the source engine so having too many enabled that aren't giving shadows are just gonna limit you and too much work 
So you make sure you disable that for that sun. Who cares? You don't really need to have it on there. Um, so yeah, that's all. Uh, that's about it for actually trying to create a, a sun in a scene. Uh, tomorrow I'm gonna try to cover some about of uh, how in, using the camera to kind of give uh, an, an enhancements to the scene, a little bit extra detail. Uh, um, until then, have a good one. Hopefully you can uh, create something like this yourself.